Hello and welcome. You're with us here on Business Today. I'm Abha Bakaya. Here are the day's top business stories. Late rally on the last street trims losses even as Sensex and Nifty close in the red. Financials and mid-caps outperform, ending with marginal gains, while Pharma, Power, Realty are the top losers. Heat on borrowers as all major banks increase lending rates from today. Those with home loans to be hit the hardest. EMIs will also rise for all new customers of auto and personal loans as well. Motown is back in the fast lane as sales zoom to pre-COVID levels. Tata Motors emerges as the biggest winner. Industry leaders express hope that the semiconductor crisis will end soon. More good news on the economic front. GSC collections top 1.4 lakh crore rupees in May. Only the fourth time ever that the level has been crossed. Ukraine war sucks the energy out of Europe as Russia turns the tap off on gas. Prices skyrocket in the continent. Inflation in Germany at a near 50-year high. Gas companies in Spain hike prices by as much as 140%. In another volatile session of trade, benchmark indices extend losing run to a second straight day now. Weakness seen in IT and auto shares pulling headline indices lower. Some strength in financial, oil and gas and metal shares lent some support. Sensex down 410 points from the day's high to shut shop at 55.3 at 1 after falling over 61 points. Nifty giving up 16,550. The street was unhappy with auto companies who posted May sales numbers. Bajaj Auto fell over 3%, turning out to be the top Nifty laggard. Other gainers include Apollo Hospital, Hindalco, Tech Mahindra and Bajaj Finster. m and continue to gain for a third straight day. JSW Steel, Coal India, HDFC Life, Court of Mahindra Bank, some of the other blue chip gainers in trade today. Emudra made a decent debut on the last street. The shares listed at 270 rupees on the NSC, a premium of more than 6% as compared to its IPO issue price of 256 rupees per share. Listing coming in amid a volatile market, sustained foreign fund outflows, and concerns about receding global growth. Emudra is one of India's largest certifying authority, and the IPO was subscribed 2.72 times. As we enter the second half of the calendar year, a slew of financial services are all set to get more expensive beginning today, be it borrowing loans or saving your money in banks, looking to buy a car or even aspiring to buy a property in the national capital. Sakshi Batra takes us through what to expect going forward. Well, that's right, Abba. We'll have to shell out more for all these services starting today. Let's start off with home loans first. Our EMIs are set to rise as a slew of banks, including SBI, PNB, HDFC, ICICI Bank, have all raised their lending rates from 5 basis points to 40 basis points on. Uh, banking services for some will get expensive as Access Bank has raised the average monthly balance for savings accounts to 25,000 rupees. India Post Payments Bank has also increased or introduced the service charges on the Aadhaar-enabled payment services services like cash withdrawals, cash deposits, transacting of the mini statements, introduce these charges beyond the first three transactions now. Apart from this, owning a car or a vehicle or a two-wheeler and buying a new car or two-wheeler will also cost you more because the third-party uh, premium insurance has also risen starting today in the range of 6 to 23 odd percent. Now, buying a property in Delhi is another going to be expensive uh, area for you because the Municipal Corporation of Delhi has hiked the transfer duty by 1 percent odd. Only breathing space coming in for the ATF prices as they have been slashed starting today by 1.3 odd percent. And this is the first cap that has uh, come in after 10 rounds of price hikes. But will this mean cheaper air travel for you and me? That's the question we are asking. Thank you, Sakshi. Now, a day after Jan to March GDP figures showed the economy rebooting to pre-pandemic levels, auto sales in May have also shown a healthy growth on the passenger vehicle front, in fact, bettering the 2019 levels in most cases. A blockbuster performance by Tata Motors, which posted its best PV sales yet, clocking a near 300% rise on 2019. Maruti, the country's biggest car maker, saw sales up 6%, while the number two Hyundai sales uh, fell half a percent on May, uh, taking it uh, to uh, 
the third position in personal vehicles, or half a percent on May 2019, if you see the you know, corroboration there on those numbers. So third for Hyundai after Maruti and Tata. Mahindra personal vehicle sales rose 38 percent to just under 27,000 units. Skoda India rallied 300 percent on the popularity of new launches like the Kushak and the Slavia. Toyota, however, posted a fall with sales lower than pre-pandemic 2019 levels. The increase in overall sales comes despite a continued shortage of semiconductors, which has led to waiting periods as long as 12 months in the case of some cars. The shortage is expected to continue, as Mahindra Group CEO Anish Shah told India Today and Ajitak News Director Rahul Kamal recently at the World Economic Forum in Davos. What we've seen as the world has changed over the last two to three years is there are various shocks that keep coming into the system. And therefore, a single source, for example, isn't a great idea because if you take uh, a specific incident during COVID where a plant in Malaysia was shut down, that impacted uh, supply chain for semiconductors across a large number of auto businesses. And uh, if you don't have a second source, then that impacts production to a much greater level. So one is dual sources. Uh, second is more standardization of parts across various models, wherever it's feasible. Some things are obviously not feasible, but uh, in many cases it is feasible. These are all items that take longer lead times in the auto business, but our teams have been now working at it for the last two years and have got a lot of solutions around it. It's also sourcing chips uh, in various different ways, relationships with chip makers and our uh, auto tier one uh, component makers. In the past, you always worried about the health of your direct suppliers. Uh, in this world today, in supply chains, you got to worry about the health of their suppliers and the health of that supply chain and at tier three level as well. So it's a combination of all those factors. I think we're getting better at it now. Our teams are a lot more resilient to address any shocks that come about and which is why it has eased a lot overall from our standpoint. If you've grown fond of working at home, probably Tesla might not be the place for you. The world's richest man appears to have had it with this whole work from home business. Tesla chief executive Elon Musk has effectively banned work from home, saying attendance of 40 hours a week in office is a minimum requirement for all workers, adding that any additional work hours can be spent at home. The CEO went on to specify that the office must be a main Tesla office, not a remote branch office. Do you get tense about your luggage when you arrive at an airport? Well, there's no need to anymore, at least at Delhi Airport, which is introducing the RFID-enabled baggage tags to help arriving passengers track their baggage. The tags can be purchased in departures lounge and when registered, can be tied to a piece of check-in baggage. Their movement can then be traced on arrival at the Delhi Airport. The facility will be available in both the international and domestic arrival terminals. Diversification is the new mantra in the Indian digital assets industry with top three crypto exchanges by trading volumes expanding into other businesses. For an industry which was uh, on a high just six months ago, expecting a legislation to clear up the fog around their activities, times have been exceptionally tough since the tax shocker in the union budget. For the Indian crypto enthusiast, it's been one blow after another. The crypto legislation expected in the winter session of parliament did not happen. The budget introduced a 30% income tax and 1% TDS in conjunction with several draconian accounting measures. RBI reportedly leaned on banks and payment getaways to snap their ties with crypto exchanges. Even SEBI has jumped in the mix by recommending celebrities not be allowed to appear in crypto ads. Crypto exchanges have also been asked to maintain KYC records of all customers for five years. The reaction to the government action was swift. Trade volumes dropped drastically across all exchanges. Faced with this harsh reality, the top three crypto exchanges are diversifying their operations. CoinSwitch Kuber is entering into equities and mutual funds. CoinDCX plans to invest in startup with its new investment arm. Coin DCX Ventures and Bazirx founders have shifted their base to Dubai and are focusing on new projects. Uh, tools that we have developed for Coin DCX, which we can extend it to our portfolio companies. If any company, Indian company, wants to go global, we can help them with that. If any global company wants to come to India because of our large user base, uh, they can directly get instant distribution, instant access to uh, the larger retail crypto base. 
the recent plunge in prices of cryptocurrencies, particularly of Terra Luna, has also spooked investors. Bitcoin has fallen 18% in just one month, while Ether has plunged 32% in the same period. Binance is also down 18%. Solana has slipped 49% in a month, while Polygon has lost 40% in a month. These, however, pale in comparisons to Terra Luna, which has fallen 100%. See, suppose after you know one percent TDS that that will get implemented soon, and the all these tax reports and everything, the compliance cost has also gone up, and on the other side, the interest from the retail segment has dropped. Despite the heightened regulatory requirements and increased compliance cost, all KYC compliant crypto exchanges in India are still standing ground. Although they are actively looking out for alternative revenue sources, these companies are still invested in India's crypto growth. As our expert rightly said, these regulations have just slowed down the speed of India's crypto train and not red-lighted it. So this is Akanksha Chaturvedi for Business Today TV. If you thought price rise was hitting only your pocket, that's not the case. A rising tide of inflation is sweeping across the world. Countries are scrambling to control skyrocketing prices, fueled largely by energy costs that have jumped to record levels following the war in Ukraine. Among the worst hit is Europe, with Russia stopping gas supplies to countries depending on it. Prices of commodities are skyrocketing in the world's most advanced economies. The strongest of them are facing an unprecedented and a most unexpected situation. Groceries are getting costlier, household budgets have gone for a toss. All thanks to a string of sanctions imposed by the West on Russia following the invasion of Ukraine. The most direct and visible impact is on energy prices, from fuel for cars and trucks to pipe gas to kitchens. Prices are on the boil. Europe especially has been hit hard by a perfect storm of falling gas supplies and rising food costs. Russia's war on Ukraine has pushed food and energy prices to fresh highs, putting pressure on households worldwide. And India is not the only nation battling the inflation monster. The common man in Spain now shells out a lot more to buy cooking gas. One of the big operators in the country announced a 140% price increase on Tuesday. With Russia limiting the supply of gas to the European Union, energy prices have jumped 39% in May, sending inflation in the 19-nation bloc soaring to a multi-year high of 8.1%. The hardest hit has been EU's biggest economy, Germany, where prices are at a five-decade high of 7.9%. Energy prices in Germany zoomed 38% in May. And as the Americans commence their summer season travel, record high gas prices are pinching their wallets too. The national average price for a gallon of petrol has hit $4.62. It's an 11% increase in the past one month. Russia's thirsty battle tanks have sucked out the energy from economies across the world with inflation at a decade high will the world lose this battle to recession bureau report business today tv you're watching us then our special show where we answer all your questions on stocks with the markets currently as volatile as they have been who better than our global business editor to take you through some uh, clear strategy and level-headed thinking when it comes to markets at a time like this. If you have a question, do uh, send it to us on the number on your screen. We'll answer a select few every week. Our first query today from Sanjay Agarwal in Gurugram. He is holding happiest minds. Uh, let's listen into his query. Hi Uddin. I'm Sanjay Agarwal from Gurugram. I'm holding 50 shares of happiest minds at the rate of Rs. 1144 per share. I seek to know from you whether I should simply hold them as it is, sell them now or add more at current prices with the aim to average my holdings. I look forward to have your mid to long term perspective. Thanks. Hmm. 
Well, Happy Smiles is a good company with an excellent promoter and a very good management team. The problem was that it had become too expensive. I mean, you will recall, I mean, you didn't buy at the top, but you know, the stock was trading at 1500 and 1600 rupees. Uh, so the correction that we've seen in Happiest Minds all the way down to 850-900 levels from those levels, it's a significant correction, is part correcting with the sector because the whole IT space has corrected quite significantly because of all the problems of uh, what is going on in the Western world. Uh, people have great concerns about whether the uh, kind of demand that we seek for IT services will continue and particularly for companies like Happiest Minds, which cater to the digital segment. There's been a collapse in valuations in the digital segment uh, because of the NASDAQ fall. And therefore, there has been a sentimental impact on Happiest Minds as well. So I think part of it is because of all those issues and part of it is the very lofty valuations that uh, the company was trading at 55, 60 times. And that had to correct in line with uh, the fear of interest rates going up and the general compression and valuations in the market. Uh, even now, Happiest Minds, uh, after such a big correction, is trading at 35, 36 P multiple on FY24, which is not the cheapest valuation. And the last quarter's numbers were not bad, but they were by the um, standards of Happiest Minds, maybe a little lackluster. But I think it's a company which can still give you about 20% revenue growth and 25% profit growth over the next two, three years, if not longer. So growth is there. It's whether the stock bottoms out at a P multiple of 30 or around these levels, which is a difficult judgment call to take. So I think this stock will need to consolidate for some time longer. Uh, I don't know whether this is the right time to average. Maybe you'll find even better price points going ahead. Uh, but keep valuations in mind. Otherwise, I think it's a very good company to own in the medium term. All right, Zubin Darwala is uh, sending in a query. Uh, he is from Mumbai and he has uh, a query on banks and financials. Listen in. Hi, Udian. Uh, I like your show a lot and uh, uh, the way you cover it well. Thanks for it. Uh, I had a view, uh, I wanted to know your view on State Bank of India, uh, HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank. Is it the right time to enter in these stocks or should we wait for a fall further? Thank you. Well, they have corrected both ICICI and State Bank of India for um, from their recent peaks quite significantly. More importantly, they've actually been consolidating uh, even good performers like SBI. Uh, Last six months, I think the stock has done practically nothing. So it's been a range and it's consolidating. Uh, and that's because the sector has not just been a complete underperformer. Uh, but now I think it's an interesting time for many of these bank stocks because interest rates will start to go up. They have started inching higher. Uh, and one has to take a call on how many of these banks will do in a rising interest rate scenario. Some banks actually can, uh, stand to do quite well. I mean, if you look at an ICICI bank, uh, the way their uh, loan book is set up, I think they could reprice it quite easily, but they're flexible loans, uh, and therefore they could actually stand to do well in a rising rate environment. Uh, on State Bank of India, uh, that is probably a little trickier because they have a very large government security book, and as interest rates go higher, some of the bond portfolios might not do very well. So you could see some hits coming in on SBI from that point of view. But SBI is not expensive. Given the strength of its subsidiaries, it's still trading at about one time price to book after uh, doing quite well over the last couple of years. ICICI Bank has now become about two and a half times book now. It's done very well over the last couple of years. Uh, so I think these are two names which in a good banking portfolio or a good financial portfolio are very essential holdings. Now, the bigger call is whether banks will unwind their underperformance and start to perform well once again. That is a trickier call. Uh, I don't have the answer to that, but having underperformed for the last one year, I think the name, the two names that you mentioned, these are very good holdings for the long term, medium to long term. Uh, the near term outlook for the next six to nine months is still unclear to me. Uh, because banks don't seem like the leaders of the market any longer as they used to be a couple of years ago. Ashutosh Wani has also sent in a query and Ashutosh is uh, curious about LTI. Listen in. Hello sir, I am Ashutosh Wani. I had purchased 50 shares of LTI at 6,800. Should I sold it 
or hold it for long term because the merger news are coming out of LTI and Mindtree which were affecting the share price of LTI. Mm. You're right. I think the merger news and the risks which the merger might bring, uh, all mergers come with risks. Uh, that is weighing down on the stock. The stock has corrected very, very significantly. I think it's down about 40% over the last few months. Uh, so L&T Infotech is, uh, has taken a bit of a beating. It had run up significantly prior to the merger announcement, of course. Uh, uh, so let's see how L&T Mindtree, the two come together and uh, how long this process of consolidation, integration of operations and the eventual transition takes place. But they will become a fairly significant force, the two together. They were both, both well-run companies. Uh, now a management transition is taking place. Uh, but they will soon be knocking on the doors of being the top five among Indian IT companies. They will be in a position to bid for much larger deals. In the past, that has been an issue. But now they can go for those big $250 million, $400 million kind of deals as well. But, uh, and uh, you know, it's a fast growing company. If you put the two together, uh, they will probably be trading at something in the ballpark of 23, 24 PE, not cheap, not the most expensive either after the correction. So I think it probably makes sense for longer term investors to be patient with this management and probably wait for a while to see how this merger pans out. I wouldn't be in a hurry to dispense with the holding immediately on l and Infotech. I think it's a fairly high quality company. Yes, IT stocks are correcting right now. There is an overhang out there and it might take a little bit of time for that overhang to clear. But I think longer term, given the demand metrics, given the kind of strengths which both these companies come with, moderate valuations and the tailwind of the currency, I think this probably is a good combination, L&T plus uh, Mindtree to hold on to in your portfolio, in a, in a high quality technology stock portfolio. All right, let's also take a look at some of those pharma names. Harsha has a query on Lupin. Uh, uh, let's hear him out. Hi, this is Harsha from Bangalore. I bought Lupin shares of uh, 180 at 998 rupees. Shall I sell it or hold it? Thank you. I'm not a big fan of uh, Lupin, I'm sorry to say, because, uh, you know, it doesn't strike me as the best in class uh, a pharmaceutical stock to own in India. But I think most of the frontline players are probably better placed than Lupin. Uh, and Lupin's performance is nothing to, I mean, if you, even if you look at the last quarter's numbers which went by, you know, margins were poor, there was hardly any sales growth. Uh, and the US business, which is the bread and butter for Lupin, it's seeing continuous price erosion and that business is degrowing. India is better, the India portfolio, but no great shakes either. And you look at the stock, I mean, Lupin is down 50% from its all-time high. You look at the last, I, I think the stock peaked in 2015 and seven years have gone by and the stock is down about some 50-60% from those levels. Uh, it's been a wealth destroyer, frankly, over the last seven years. Uh, uh, so the period running after 2015 was good for Lupin, but somehow it seems to have lost its way with growth over the last five, seven years. And I don't see the stock really bouncing back in a big way and rewarding shareholders. So uh, in pharmaceuticals, you can, you can pick many other higher, faster growing companies. And I would say that uh, you can think of at least five, six Indian pharma companies which are much better placed than Lupin at this point in time. So it's been a star in the past, uh, but I think it needs to revisit or, or, or refine that uh, zest uh, uh, which seems to have lost over the last five and seven years. It would not be my top of uh, the heap in Indian Pharma at all. All right, uh, that's about all we could squeeze in uh, on today's show, but we will continue to take those queries week on week. Then thanks so much for uh, taking the time out to answer some of those stock-specific questions. We'll see you again next week. Here's the number on your screen. Do send in your queries, and we'll take a select few every week on our special segment, Ask Then.